Hello Buns, I recently have been very successful in Savage Raiding, and by successful I mean barely clearing. But in doing Savage Raiding, there are so many advanced or intermediate healing ideas that should be getting implemented in casual content. The only reason they're not, I presume, is because of lack of understanding. So today we're going to break down the only two healing buffs that are important to understand, and that's the increase in healing potency and HP recovery by healing actions. Odds are you've seen these, but probably don't understand what they mean or what skills, abilities, or spells they apply to. This is going to really deepen your knowledge of healing and get you on the path to be the best healer you can be and even affect on how you play other jobs. Now, I am human, I do miss things, so feel free to include in the comments if you have any nuggets of gold to add to this and make sure to hit that like button if you're down there already. Healing potency buffs are simply explained as increasing healing magic by X percentage. When you see increase to healing magic, they are always talking about spells or generally GCDs, like on White Mage would be Cure 1 or Cure 2, or a Flatus Solus or Flatus Rapture. Tetragrammaton is not a spell, but an ability. Therefore, this would not see an increase in healing with this particular buff. Healing action buffs is explained by HP recovery by healing actions, meaning anything that causes healing, no matter where the healing is coming from. So if a gunbreaker has a healing recovery by actions buff, let's say through Sage's Krasis ability, and uses Aurora, which is the Gunbreaker's own self-heal ability, you will see an increase in your Aurora healing. Example here is Aurora casted by the most amazing FC leader monkey who runs my official Bun Boss FC for Goblin Server, increases their health usually by 3.7 to 3.9k. Once I cast Krasis, that now increases to about 4.7 on each tip. One more way to think of this is usually healing magic potency increases the healer's output healing. HP recovering by healing action affects the person who has all the incoming healing to them. The reason this is so important, because let's say you're a bard main and you use nature's min, which increases HP recovery via healing actions by 15%. This is a huge buff for healers, so use this when the party member's health are really low and you want to help your healers be able to get everybody's health back up. But healers are not all made equal, and these are not an even spread between healers. So let's go through and see where each healer has these buffs at. White Mage has Asylum, which increased HP recovery via healing actions by 10%, with the caveat that they have to be in the bubble. This is also not instant. It takes server ticks for this buff to be applied to them if they are not in the area in which you casted it. We can see this by Cure 2 it will heal approximately 19k, but when in Asylum, it will heal 21k, around a 10% increase. This is also the same for Tetragrammaton. Outside of Asylum, this heals for 16.8k, but inside of Asylum, this heals for 18.5k. The takeaway here is it's very important to have Asylum down when using healing abilities or spells to make them go farther and is a big benefit to your White Mage healing. What about regen? How does this work with Asylum? How regens work in general in Final Fantasy is that it's a snapshot of the buffs at the time you've casted regen. So if you regen outside of Asylum, we will tick for about 6k health. When you walk into Asylum, the regen doesn't increase. That is because it's not a dynamic calculation of healing. It only snapshots when you've applied it. Let's say we step in Asylum, get the buff, and then apply the regen. We now see the regen ticking for about 6.8k healing. Takeaway, if you're going to apply a regen, a Medica 2, or really any healing and you have Asylum available, you're going to get far more healing output when under the effects of Asylum. This is generally why you see putting Asylum down where the tank stops with wall-to-wall -wall pulls is highly recommended. It essentially buffs all your white mage healing by 10%. That is as long as they're standing in the bubble. 
White Mage also has Temperance. This is a huge increase to healing magic by 20%, which means GCDs or spells. Now, usually for all other healers, this would become less and less useful as we get later in the game. We start shying away from using GCD healing like Cure 2, Benefic 2, or Plain Old Diagnosis. White Mage is very special in this case because White Mage's job abilities are spells. Aflatus Solus and Aflatus Rapture, which means they see 20% gigantic boost in healing potency. The reason we prioritize using Aflatus Rapture and Aflatus Solus is it's a DPS neutral now, after a certain level when we can access Blood Lily. And we can use these charges for our big damage nuke. Now, I wanted to start with White Mage because it does have that little caveat of their job abilities actually being spells or GCDs. But let's quickly go over all the other healers so then you have a better understanding of healing potency buff and HP recovering via healing actions buff in relation to the other healers. Scholar has two healing magic buffs, that is Fey Illumination and Dissipation, being 10% and 20% respectively. Now, can anyone tell me why this actually kind of sucks for Scholar? I'll give you a second. No, it's not because of that, but it's because 90% of Scholar's healing is from abilities, not spells. All of the fairy healing are abilities and all of your ether flow are abilities. So you never actually see usage on this other than when you're using Sucker or Adlo, which is not as common as you get later down the road other than your Resuscitate Adlo deployment tactics shielding. The only pro here is that Fey Illumination also applies this buff to the party, which means if you're in a trial or alliance raid, your co-healer will get this buff as well. Which means if it's a white mage using a Flatus Solus or a Flatus Rapture or GCD spamming, hopefully that they're not, they will get an increase to their healing. Scholar does have Protraction though, which increases HP recovery by healing actions by 10%, which you see this mostly used on tanks and is affected by all of Scholar's healing abilities. We can see an example of this by using Lustrate, it heals for 12.3k, and with Protraction, that same Lustrate ability will increase to 13.8k. Astrologian, which never registered in my head, has zero HP recovering action buffs to apply. They only have a healing spell buff potency through neutral sect and damn is it strong. This essentially makes you godlike for a bit, but again it is spells aka GCD timers and is really only used for emergencies. Well, they do have a 5% healing buff potency when their Astrodyne has three perfect signs. But most likely you're going to be using that damage buff in order to get a bunch of damage single target GCDs out and or AOE if you're in casual content. The reason this isn't the biggest deal for Astro though is just the sheer number of healing and regens at its disposal and the strength of them. It's just a powerful class of its own right, but made much more busy by the card mechanic. Sage is really where the culmination of all this shines, and I'm not biased as a Sage main, but Sage is strong as shit, and the main reason is due to Physis 2, gained at level 60. And you're taught very early to keep regens up. There is more to it than that. Physis 2 applies a HP recovery by healing actions by 10% to the entire party every 60 seconds. Oh yeah, healing actions, which means all of your healing abilities from Sage get buff every time. This can be best compared to White Mage's Asylum, which is 90 seconds, and the team has to stand in the stupid bubble, god forbid. Sage also has something similar to a healing magic potency buff, which is Zoe, that increases your next healing spell, aka GCD healing, by 50%. This can either be a diagnosis, prognosis, or Eucratian diagnosis, prognosis, but this is best spent on Numa, Sage, level 90 ability. This turns that 600 potency heal to a 900 potency heal. That is gigantic and basically saves your party in Savage Raging, as I've come to find out. Now, I know this may have been a lot and got into a lot of detail about a specific portion of healing, but this is getting into those more advanced healing techniques that some Sprouts or beginners players always wonder like, wow, how do you heal so good? And yes, it is about pairing good healing abilities, but understanding why they are paired is really important. 
kind of like a teach a man how to fish kind of proverb thing here. Now I have some more advanced healing guides coming out for every healer in the next couple of weeks. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to get notified when those come out. I also have a super amazing discord community. So if you're looking for a discord to call home, consider checking my discord community out. It is more than just a notification center. It really has become the center of my entire community. I want to give a huge thank you to all the Patreon, YouTube, and Discord subscription subscribers as your monetary support really helps to keep this channel running. And if you want to watch my vast library of Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.